a few more uh, factors, considerations in regard to authentication. Um, an awful lot of the time, what we are doing with authentication is one-time authentication. We sign on, and that's good enough for the entire day. And uh, with regard to some of our sensitive information, maybe that is not good enough. Uh, there is uh, the possibility of continuous authentication. Um, in some cases, that has been implemented with certain types of uh, uh, tokens, for example, um, USB keys that uh, you stick into the computer, and as long as the key is stuck into the computer, you are considered to be logged on. Uh, you want to perhaps attach the USB key to the employee if you're going to be doing that, so that when they walk away from the terminal, it's, uh, you know, the key pulls out. Um, anyways, uh, you know, the, there, there is the possibility of continuous authentication. Um, some people have considered doing it with biometrics, that they have uh, face recognition. As long as you're sitting in front of the terminal, you're the one sitting in front of the terminal, then you're logged in. Um, so, uh, there... You know, there is that possibility for continuous authentication. Um, then there's uh, talk to, uh, which is the time of check versus the time of use. And, and again, this is uh, considering, you know, are we uh, authenticating at the actual time that somebody is uh, using or accessing uh, something? Um, or is it a situation where, you know, one time fits all. You you sign on once you've got uh, that terminal for the day, uh, whatever. It you know with with our um, increasing um, mobile uh, and and remote work situations, um, you may want to consider uh, additional uh, factors, particularly when. Um, a person may, you know, one of your employees may be dealing with sensitive information, but only at certain times of the day. And so uh, we will have situations where um, maybe they are signed on, but when accessing a sensitive resource, um, we try and ensure that there is uh, an additional um, uh, authentication that goes on. Um, uh, for this uh, additionally sensitive information or, or resource. Uh, so you may want to want to do that. Now, uh, again, additional factors for authentication and in terms of deciding what type of authentication we are uh, dealing with, there's cost. Uh, and of course, as as it is said, uh, you know, the only reason that we're still dealing with passwords is that they are free. Um, and you know what you uh, what you pay for is what you get. So um, you know we we want to consider that it you know do we want to equip everybody with. Uh, USB keys uh, as a continuous authentication feature, uh, knowing that uh, in many cases they will simply walk away from the terminal leaving the key in place. Uh, so uh, we've got uh, you know, factors for consideration there. Uh, there is the processing time. Um, if we're dealing with biometrics and uh, oh, uh, what is... Uh, the movie, anyways, there, there was a science fiction movie that had absolutely everybody checking in, and not only uh, did they uh, use biometrics, DNA as a biometric, but they used DNA and processed it in terms of what should you look like at this uh, age, and, you know, starting with the, the DNA that you've got. Um, and so do you match it? There, you know, kind of could have been a, a multi-factor authentication um, situation there but the processing time i mean you know they had uh p 
people in in this movie uh, walking through turnstiles to enter a workplace and, and just, you know, walking through the turnstiles, getting a, a prick of their finger to, to get access to, to DNA as they did this. And, uh, uh, you know, everything was just clicking along. Um, these days, to do that kind of analysis to generate uh, a phenotype from... A, a DNA sample, you know, it takes weeks these days. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, there would have to be a considerable improvement in the processing speed and technology. So, you know, what is the processing time? What are we going to be using it for? Um, what do we uh, need? How important is this? You know, considerations here. Um, yes, it's accurate, but... Uh, is you know do we do we need that uh can we afford the time uh to do it uh the accuracy um and we have talked about uh the false positives and false negatives um for these interestingly um and i probably should have uh dealt with this when we were dealing with biometrics um the uh you know we have false positive uh we give the okay and and we shouldn't we give uh we have false negatives um we uh, uh wrongly say that no this person is not an employee and and should be denied access um and then we have um well we have the rates for each of those and then we have uh what is referred to as the crossover error rate. As you increase the sensitivity when um, you're looking at a, well, any kind of access control system, um, but particularly with regard to biometrics, um, as we increase the, uh, the accuracy and discrimination, we get fewer false positives, but more false negatives and those two curves at some point will cross over each other and uh, vendors of biometric systems like to use the crossover error rate as um, I mean it's a nice single number and uh, it uh, allows them to compare themselves generally favorably if they're using it with some other system. Now, if, if we're going to use that, um, be aware of what it means and make sure that you're not just getting a single number, but in fact the curves themselves. Because it, it looks very neat when you're just plotting two smooth curves against each other. Um, but we very seldom find this in reality. And so we may have uh, the curves um, uh, with some jags in them, some, uh, well, maybe not exactly zigzags, but uh, certain factors that will mean that sometimes the crossover point is not necessarily what we are going to use um and it's when when you think about it um, it's easy to see that the crossover uh rate is not magical um it's just a single point and we need to pay more attention to uh what we are going to see in uh, regard to the actual accuracy and whether or not it's appropriate. Um, so we want to uh, look at those false positive, false negatives, crossover error rate, but uh, you know, pay attention to what they actually mean rather than just the numbers. Um, there are some additional factors. Uh, that we're dealing with um, and some of them we've talked about before um, the acceptance again you know is this going to be uh, okay for our users uh, 
and we've talked about, for example, the, the retina scanner scanning, which people find very invasive, and the iris scanning, which they don't. Um, how resistant is this to counterfeiting? Uh, are we uh, going to have a situation where, um, yeah, it's okay. Um, we have, uh, you know, a, a good way of detecting counterfeiting. Or is this something where uh, material or uh, pictures or imprints can be uh, copied and, and then accepted as authentication? Um, how much data storage do we require? And again, uh, standard uh, situations like fingerprints, we have standard means of data storage, but some of the up and coming biometric technologies may not have fully mature systems for uh, doing the data representation. And, and therefore we may have to store fairly large amounts of data in order to use them. Uh, so, that is basically uh, a, a number of factors that we need to address, that we need to understand when we are dealing with, uh, well, any, any kind of access control system and, and the factors that go into choosing a specific one.